Hi everyone, I'm Kenneth. So, Omegle.com has suddenly shut down. And when you access the website right now, you see this very, very long letter um, from the founder himself, Leif K. Brooks. So, how do we uh, understand this particular statement of his and what are the implications of shutting down this random chat platform that has been around since 2009? So, let's break it down. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Kenneth Corio and welcome to this channel. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and if you're not yet updated with my latest content, the bell icon is just down below. So uh, just today, a few, a few hours ago, uh, Omegle, the platform that has been uh, a, a staple for young kids, or, and anyone on the internet to uh, chat with a random person has just shut down and in replacement of the platform is a page containing a letter from the founder and CEO of Omegle, Leif K. Brooks. So how do we um, understand or what was really the message that uh, Leif K. Brooks uh, tried to explain on his website and what were the implications what were the reasons on why he had to shut down the website so just to summarize just to give you a quick background to uh, just to let you know what's uh, what's the uh, what's the message that he is trying to convey um, he reflected on his experiences on using or creating Omega based on his experiences no? so uh, he started off with a quote uh, with two quotes uh, to be exact from uh, C.S. Lewis and uh, he also quoted Douglas Adams so he started with the quote from C.S. Lewis which is actually from the book uh, uh, God in the dock if I can remember it correctly so um, he said in this quote um, of all tyrannies a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive so if I were to ask um, what could be the implications that he is trying to convey to start that particular letter um, I think the quote um, just to give you a quick context, the, the book itself is actually a compilation of uh, unpublished works or essays of C.S. Lewis since his death. So it was like a, like a random compilation of all his thoughts you know, on religion, on uh, theology. So if you fully read that quote, it's basically highlighting the idea that um, well-intentioned efforts to control or restrict anyone from the supposed benefit of uh, something can be oppressive no so i think uh, leaf k brooks uh, opened up with this quote because uh, he wants to emphasize certain attacks on the platform um, and all the bad actors that have been proliferating in the website so he could be driven concerns he could have driven concerns on the potential or the actual misuse of the platform that is why um, I think through that letter to the whole letter um, and with that introductory quotation he has some some sort of well intentions I should say about limiting the freedom of using Omega to individuals because of the the misuse that was probably unintentional no and that is what i think why he used that quote from c.s lewis and then i would go uh with the next quote which is from douglas adams if you know douglas adams is known for his very humorous take of 
uh, significant and unexpected changes through his many works. So he quoted this, uh, this quote, in the beginning the universe was created. This made a lot of people very angry and been widely regarded as a bad move. Parang ano, parang quote from the Bible, no? From the start of the Genesis. In the beginning, the God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> Ako. Um, there is really this particular strong reaction if you if pag pag binasa mo if you if you read this particular quote from Douglas Adams, it's like, why did he quote that? It's really really contrasting to positivity and uh, the good intentions of Omega. No, it. I think um, if you if you read between the lines of when he quoted Douglas Adams, like this made a lot of people very angry. Blah 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 blah. When the universe was created, when probably when Omega was created, it generated a lot of positive, but mostly negative reactions or like um, uh, shall I say, uh, unfortunate consequences. I would say, you no. Know? throughout the development of the of the website of the platform in the last 13 14 years i think um because of the platform that had millions of users it had an unfortunate effect an unfortunate development for those you know uh for those who just want to explore like to communicate with some random person and wanted to use it for positive purposes there was an unintentional a side to it that maybe it's because of these bad actors these perpetrators of crime no online uh, exploitation or abuse that could be the reason why uh, people who may never use that platform or have used that platform became very angry you know especially how uh, it had intended if how it had certain effects to those who are using especially young children so in both cases i think why did leaf brooks leaf k brooks uh used those two quotations to start the letter um might have like a perspective on the challenges that omegle faced during its long run for like 13 14 years and the importance of preserving the balance between safety online safety if, if um if i would uh if i would think of it it's it's like setting a balance between online safety and the freedom to connect that's what that's what me that's what i as a an it professional um looking into it like when you create this chat platform with the intention to connect to people there are also those other people that have um, malicious intents or shall I say um, very bad intentions or uh, harmful intentions to be in the platform and spread harm or spread uh, chaos into the platform. That's what could possibly be the reason why this had happened and that could be something that we need to look uh, look into when checking other platforms especially social media so that's why I, I, I was really curious about why Leaf K Brooks really started off with those two quotes so just to continue with um, how he explained it um, I would just uh, somehow summarize a bit on the middle part of the, the letter um, when he stated how he created uh, the platform. So to summarize, Omega was born out of his desire to create this space, this platform, shall I say, this um, area where people gather together to do spontaneous conversation, one-on-one -on -one conversations, you no know, one-way, con a two-way conversation, you no, know? and I think Leaf K. Brooks was having good intentions to meet new people online, 
given that he had uh, a somehow undesirable past, a traumatic past. So that was somehow his way of escape from that trauma. And I believe that's, uh, that's how he uh, took upon on creating a medal. No, so I should say, uh, K. Brooks acknowledges really that the fact that maraming magandang nangyari with uh, Omega, especially like the feedback right? people um, through Omega, this person met uh, his or her spouse, or um, somehow they they found a friend, uh, maybe. I created that content out of it, you know, that, 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 was, that was something of a positive up, impact on Omega. But then he really acknowledges that fact that there are malicious activities that ha that was happening on the platform. Although it's really, really small given the number of users in the platform. But then if you, if you put focus on that, those subset of users who have been abused who have been sexually exploited um, maybe uh, being engaged in fraud or fraudulent activities or other scams so this is where uh, the balance has to be set you now in, in uh, maintaining Omega the website so he did underscore those efforts in content moderation because imagine how do you police a website with like hundreds of millions of users no how do you police each and every conversation happening on the platform when it's being used around the world diba right? so that's 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 the difficulty of it especially when you uh, put it in parallel with other social media platforms Facebook, X, Instagram um, all of these platforms no? TikTok is also a part of it no, it's, it's also that, that particular reason these bad actors that has put Omegle into such a dire situation no? he explicitly stated in that letter that uh, they were financially bleeding they were in the red um, he could not already maintain the website anymore his mental health was already in jeopardy from all of these attacks so that is why he raised those concerns on that letter because of those recent attacks on the platform so because of those uh, reasons, I would really uh, suppose that Leaf K. Brooks had to shut down the website immediately because of those reasons. So, he, if you read the end part of the letter, he really said that he raised those concerns to the broader challenges based by other online communication services not just omega no how, how how come no if you if you think of it if you go into those other communication services i would say for examples of it are telegram um whatsapp viber uh, all of those platforms and also clones of omega no no it's more of like chat roulettes or random chat apps you know? that's something we need to like focus on especially you want to again set the balance between online safety and uh, helping people communicate with each other that's 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 the that's the strike striking the balance there that's striking the balance there and I think the only way Leif K. Brooks um, um, did to strike a balance between th that those two extremes 
is to shut down the website. That's it. It's 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 a particularly heartbreaking, but then it's also a way for him to somehow preserve the freedoms that we as internet users enjoy. So I think here's here's my personal take on it. You no, know, although I don't use Omega as frequently, you no, know, I just use Omega just to you know check what if there are updates about some random person somewhere in the world what he is doing you no know? but then again there were instances that there were random people that I encountered who really ex uh, explicitly asked me to like what's your uh, what's your details and like um, can we do something you know something undesirable just to <laughs> just to say to it uh, nicely it's really it's really painful to like read read that particular very very long letter no so i think uh, just to just to think of it no let's let's break it down now on what were those what was those questions that i asked when i read the letter no so I would start first with what were the malicious activities that were involved using a mega no although Leif K Brooks uh, did not specify on his letter but um, according to um, most of the internet reports and online news reports no about Omega no, it's well known that uh, it has been facing a lot of issues with in relation to inappropriate use or misuse and harmful behavior you know, uh, harassment maybe um, scams criminal activities were also happening on Omega so I think that that could be those reasons no and also with the criticism of Omega uh, for its anony anonymity you no know, which which I think as um, as an advocate for uh, information literacy and also cybersecurity, um, because inherently Omega has really, really weak security measures, and its anonymity is really questionable, because it can be exploited because of malicious intent. You can actually insert like malicious code into a, a script into the chat. Uh, section of Omega that has been very challenging to be to be honest with you no I I, I wished that Omega was like peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, had peer-to-peer -peer security no or like two-factor authentication like that but then it could hamper most users who are who have very unsophisticated hardware that's that's the that's the catch so that's why they get it on a very basic uh, communication layer i should say no so that's that's something very somehow disappointing when using omega no so i i could also ask um when i read the letter i could also ask um what could be some of those examples no those measures that they did again anonymity content moderation is also an another thing you can also report if there is something malicious that was done during a conversation on a megal that was a good thing but then it was difficult it was difficult for the entire Megal staff to maintain those security measures and it has not been doing well no so again that was that was that particular reason okay and then um i would i would go into this part now we're in what, what were the specific reasons again of that particular shutdown of Omega 
number one again is financial unsustainability likely it was very costly to maintain the website especially with the recent times um, another reason that Leif uh, mentioned in his letter was psychological stress mental health issues you know, he mentioned that he was uh, had copious amounts of stress because of the the existing stress of handling misuse of Omega it's it, it really took a toll on him personally psychologically so I think this uh, this reason of mental health is really alarming as a when you explicitly state on your statement that I had psychological issues I had mental health issues i had stress um, in maintaining the website that's something uh, really alarming if you were like in the it industry seeing your ceo talk like that it's really alarming no also uh, another reason for the shutdown it's the attacks on the internet again he expressed those uh, criticisms against him plus some unreasonable demands I should say na because of that particular pressure on him to secure Omega while maintaining a balance well, it's really st st stressful on that person on that CEO and um, towards the end of the letter he leave K Brooks um, explicitly endorsed the Electronic Freedom Foundation or EFF um, his commitment to promote a free society on the internet so that is why it's heartbreaking to hear that these things are happening to those online platforms no so that is um, I believe those are the reasons that he expressed on shutting down Omega no so again it's it's a really um, stressful it was really heartbreaking to hear or read those words from the CEO of uh, Omega telling about those issues uh, regarding the platform and this this things that has cons um, that's conspired and uh, was the reason of the setbacks that uh, prevented uh, Omega from continuing to operate so that's why it's it really pains me to see the platform go uh, especially even still the young kids are still using it so yeah it's a pretty pretty crazy situation right now so that's it for my video today and I really wish um, more platforms like this uh, will continue to uh, flourish in the future despite the, the challenges to internet security so hopefully these plat other platforms uh, communication platforms to be exact uh, continue their their efforts to uh, improve their online security while still maintaining their intent to uh, to connect people from around the world so if you like this video hit the like button and if you want to subscribe to my channel hit the bell the subscribe um, icon on your YouTube app or your YouTube website and then hit the bell icon if you want to uh, be updated with my latest content so that's it for me so I wish uh, you like this video and I, I really hopeful that we will continue to prevail um, in online security that's the lesson I can think of with this whole fiasco happening right now at Omega so Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope to see you on our next vlog. See you. Bye-bye.